Chinese President Xi Jinping met with Russian President Vladimir Putin today for four hours. The Western world watching closely as the pair is expected to discuss trade, political cooperation, and of course, the war in Ukraine over the next few days. Joining us to discuss that meeting and what may come of it is the Council on Foreign Relations Fellow for International Political Economy, the author of the upcoming book, Sovereign Funds, How the Communist Party of China Finances Its Global Ambitions, Zoe Liu. Nice to see you. What is Vladimir Putin's goal with Xi? Thank you, Dave, very much for having me. I would say probably uh, President Xi Jinping's goal and uh, President Putin's goal are going to be very different. On the one hand, President uh, Xi Jinping might be really interested in restore China's global image, whereas Putin might want to discuss a potential support that China could uh, give Russia, both in terms of um, economic, financial, as well as perhaps military support in the war. So how seriously do you think China and President Xi Jinping is considering that? And we talk about the timing of this coming just days after Vladimir Putin was charged of war crimes. How significant is that and really just shows who China lines up with right now in the global world? Yes, Yana, thank you very much for the question. I think, you know, your highlighting of the timing is really an important important issue. And from from what from where I came from, uh, I would say actually this is not the first time or, or, or that President Xi Jinping visited Moscow or or met with Xi, uh, met with uh, Vladimir Putin, right? So, he actually has visited Russia uh, eight times since he came to power. And he has met with Putin on different bilateral and multilateral occasions for perhaps more than 40 times. And the so under normal circumstances, this meeting would not be a major news. But this time, exactly as you said, is different in the sense that on the one hand, Putin is under international isolation and is wanted by the ICC. And then uh, from Western observers perspective, Putin really is a Xi Jinping's visit, perhaps might signal that he is personally supporting Putin and perhaps that might be interpreted as China's support to Russia. But I would say from China's uh, uh, perspective, this is very different because Xi Jinping, uh, as the Chinese media highlighted, is at the invitation of Putin uh, to pay a reciprocal uh, visit following Putin's visit to China last year. Economically speaking, what does she have to gain from Vladimir Putin? So uh, I would say probably there are... Um, one thing in particular, which is energy, and then related to that would be the use of non-dollar currencies in the pricing and the settlement of energy. So the you know, latest data shows that the uh, trade of goods between China and Russia reached uh, about $190 billion last year, which is about 30% growth compared with a year ago. However, I would put this in the broader context of China's broader international trade, right? Because if you think about US, US and China trade relationship, you know, that is significantly outpaced to what extent China can trade with Russia. You know, the number by the trade number between China and the United States was uh, more than $600 billion. So from that perspective, really China's trade with Russia is, is not as much as significant. However, if Xi Jinping, we put this in the context of the sanctions and all that, perhaps the use of non-dollar currencies in international trade is very much of Xi Jinping's concern. Well, Russia and China appearing to deepen their ties. What does then all this mean, though, for the U.S.? So, Sienna, I think, you know, what I am really concerned about is that, you know, in the broader context, on the one hand, the U.S. financial institutions, especially, you know, with all these discussions about SVB collapse and, uh, you know, the misuse of PPP loans. So basically what we are experiencing is perhaps there is an opportunity or even the threat that uh, China might or Chinese media might uh, pro um, make this image or project this image that the U.S. financial system is built on a house of a card and all that, hence uh, trying to reduce international uh, confidence in U U.S. financial, uh, in the U.S. in U.S. financial system or even dollar denominated assets. So this gives China and Russia, as well as uh, uh, some other interested countries, uh, interest in uh, promoting ways to bypass U.S. sanctions. Arguably, the biggest discussion here regarding China right now is a discussions over a potential TikTok ban. We're going to talk more about that later in the program. What is the Chinese perspective on that? 
So that's an interesting uh, issue, to be honest, because if uh, you know Chinese foreign uh, foreign minister spokesperson uh, sort of uh, put a put, put a put, put a blush on it, saying that that's nonsense and all that. However, I do think there is because of China's data regulation and the establishment or the launch of a new uh, data governance bureau at the central at uh, uh, the central government level does raise serious concerns from Western perspective. However, you know, the to what extent uh, TikTok really expose a uh, systematic national security concern that we do not know. However, the perception of the threat because of this Chinese government potentially could compel companies to uh, share their data with the government, that is a legitimate concern. Zoe Liu, appreciate all that very much. Thank you.